Over 40% of all marriages in the U.S. end in divorce. So is there anything you can do to improve those chances? America's relationship expert Wendy Walsh says take a test. She's here with some <laughs> questions from the divorce test. And for those of us that were never good test takers, we dread this for sure. <laughs> and, you know, an interesting thing you just mentioned to us, most of us think the divorce rate's 50%. Right. You're saying so when you average it out, it's about 40%. In mm -hmm. fact, most marriages, most marriages in America do stay together for life, which is sort of amazing yeah. considering how long we live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if the 50% divorce rate only applies to marriages over 20 years, because back when till death do us part was invented, death was pretty imminent. Mm -hmm. right. And so because of our long lifespans, even the most monogamous humans might have two long stints of monogamy. All right, let's get right to the test. Question number one, or point number one, were yeah. you both over the age of 23? So at the wedding. I'm all about the statistics and mm -hmm. statistical probability, and 23 is the magic number. Really? So it takes a while for the brain to develop. You know, who you were at 22 is very different than, say, 28. So uh, marriages that begin before the age of 23 have virtually the highest divorce rate. It's something mm. like 90%. It's okay. crazy. Before yeah. the age of 23. Before the age of okay. 23. So you want to have uh, a mature brain to enter right. into this. Makes sense. Number two, did you choose to not live together before you got married? Well, this is interesting. It's kind of counterintuitive because a lot of people move in together because they think it's a way to audition the relationship for marriage when in fact what it does is statistically if you move in with somebody you have less chance of actually marrying that person huh. and if you do marry that person you have a higher divorce rate wow. why because people who enter into cohabitation are afraid of commitment so they put one little toe in they're not auditioning they're sort of they're staying scared. halfway in and halfway out <laughs> right. right and mm. so the truth is those commitment oriented people plan it have an engagement plan a wedding get married and dive in all right uh, do you kiss a lot do you mean literally kiss, kiss or do you mean with saliva okay Whoa, <laughs> so a little wow. peck on the little peck on the cheek have a fun day honey count. is not going to work oh. so research shows that frequency of kissing more often than frequency of sex is indicative of a healthy relationship oh. reason being is that you know sex goes down as we go along uh, in the relationship and kissing and hugging especially skin to skin touch so you need to like if you're watching movies together you need to be wrapped up in each other's arms in the evening when you do say goodbye to your hubby in the morning the kiss or the the hug has to last 20 seconds to get the <laughs> dopamine response oh, really? that keeps it. the bonding. I I'm love late that. for work. I'm going to wake got my wife up now. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I need my 20 second hug. That's yeah. right. It, it actually changes your neurochemistry. Too, yeah. Yeah. Wow. 3 o'clock in the morning. Honey, <laughs> get off of me. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Okay, so, and, but you know what, when you do see couples that have been together a long time and they're still very affectionate and cuddly, it is a very nice thing to see because you don't see The it body often. releases oxytocin, the yeah. bonding hormone, and dopamine. It's all good feeling hormones through okay. touch. Wendy, yes. does the wife not make way more money than the husband? And something tells me the word way is important. It's very here. important. So there's no magic number, but when peer couples make relatively the same, they're kind of okay. When a woman makes way more he's more likely to cheat she's more likely to leave him because he's not you know because we have these traditional gender roles right. in our head despite what modern advances have done and help women make oh. money then women start to think he's a loser because he's not making enough money so who has oh. the harder time with it though the uh, woman or both. the man both. You know that curse of the Academy Award, right? Whenever a woman right. wins an Academy Award, there comes the divorce, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you both attend college? Yes. So education and intellectual uh, sort of exercises are, are make you have monogamy because what ends up happening? What is monogamy? It's an intellectual choice. If we were just to stay in our uneducated animal brain, we would all be, you know, <laughs> yeah, if, out in the field, if, if, if it enjoying the marketplace. Your wife is just way smarter than you. I don't know. Just, just for example, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know. But it takes some muscles of monogamy. So, yeah. to, huh. and you have to have intellectual prowess for that. So, the more education you have, the more likely you are to stay married. Okay. Huh. And this last one: uh, Are you either, or either of you, a farmer? A uh, nuclear engineer or an eye doctor? Yes, believe it or not, those are the three careers with virtually the lowest divorce rate. <laughs> a nuclear engineer, an eye doctor, or a farmer. All right, well, good to know. For more information on Dr. Wendy Walsh, <laughs> see my workshop, <laughs> 10 Secrets to a Mindful yes, Marriage. Yes, the way to save your marriage is take my new workshop, 10 Secrets to a Mindful Relationship. All right, uh, if you'd like to take the divorce test uh, yourself in its entirety, you can go to KTLA.com. We'll hook you up there. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Walsh.